Hi everyone, it's me, Carrot. Thank you so much for tuning in. This video is all about postpartum care if you've had a C-section or even a vaginal, but I'm gonna focus on a C-section recovery because I've had my second emergency C-section about two weeks ago, and while everything is fresh, I wanted to sit here and record all the things that have been really, really helpful um, so that if you are planning on having a C-section or even <laughs> you're like me, like you have an open mind, um, I hope you find this video very helpful. Some things that I mentioned in this video, I wish I had known the first time around. And in both cases, um, my C-sections were emergency situations. Um, you can always go back to my old videos to see my or hear my story. And also, I was actually trying to go for a V-back this time around. I was really hopeful for a V-back. I did not get a V-back, but I'm really happy that um, there is such a thing called a C-section um, because if not, I would not have had my two daughters with me. So with that said, um, the first thing I'm going to mention, you are going to most likely need support. Okay, and I got this from the hospital. I requested a belly band. I know some women don't, but I requested a belly band and that was just to help me with um, posture, just help me with the support. I got a spinal block the second time around, the first time I got an epidural. And oh my gosh, everything was so numb. I couldn't really feel anything below my navel for a few days. I still can't, I'm still very numb. So I can literally take something and like just pass over my abs and I'm not gonna feel anything. But while in the hospital and just trying to get around, um, leaving my room to go to NICU, this belly band came in very, very, very helpful with providing the abdominal support and the back support. It's not fancy. If you go to Amazon, you are gonna see this and it got very high ratings. I have tried a couple of belly bands bef before with my first um, baby, Abney, who is now three. And honestly, this one by far is my, my favorite. It's the most helpful one out of everyone that I've tried. Now, having done this before, I knew I was gonna need a stool softener. So even while in the hospital, I asked them to provide me with a stool softener. They gave me, um, I think, milk of magnesia, I'm not sure. That took a little while to work, but it, it did work eventually to initially help me pass a lot of the gas that I had um, post-surgery. Um, when I left the hospital, I was already prepared with a stool softener in my emergency bag or my labor and delivery bag that eventually made its way to me because I was in the hospital for a while like over a week almost two weeks actually and so I recommend a stool softener the doctor on your discharge paperwork they will recommend a stool softener but having used this one before I just got this out at Walmart this was very very helpful and it really does work quickly I take one every eight hours so I just take it twice a day morning and evening and there are other instructions that you're going to follow. But please, you know, use the stool softener because it's going to make life a little bit more easier. Um, I did not struggle to go number two, but having to pee was another story. Um, it literally felt like my bladder would have fallen out of my incision. Now, we know that's not going to happen, but that is what it felt like. Whenever I got into a squat position to pee, for some reason, when that pee was coming out, it literally felt like my incision was going to open up and my bladder was going to fall out. But for some reason, um, if it was just to have a bowel movement, I did not have that sort of dis discomfort. So what I found was that when I was trying to pee, I would have to squat like halfway up above, you know, above the, 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 the toilet, the seat. And that was just kind of weird because with Abney, it was the other way around. But anyway, um, on that note, I will recommend a Perry bottle. It's one of those bottles that they provide in the hospital. But I also had in my labor and delivery bag as well. And this is what it looks like. It's just a little squirt bottle that you can buy from the store, the pharmacy. 
um, because of the pandemic I was doing a lot of online shopping so I just got mine off Amazon and um, the hospital provided me with two anyway so I have lots of bottles but um, you want to fill this up with distilled water preferably because of course you want to keep everything fresh as possible as clean as possible and so when you're peeing you can squirt water at the same time no I didn't really have to do that um, but this helped me with just keeping the area down there clean after having um, like you know when you pee you rinse off and that just really really helps to keep the area clean now if you have a vaginal um, a lot of women say that when you pee and you know squeeze or squirt water at the same time that helps relieve um, some of the pain but that I wouldn't know right but I just use this to cleanse on that note of cleanliness um, while in the hospital there were a couple of days when I couldn't take a shower um, post-surgery and even before because with my blood pressure issues they did not want me moving around so uh, they provided these um, bath cloths and these I swear were life-saving there was a time when my legs were itchy my back was itchy and one of the nurses just kind of took a couple of these and gave me like a dry bath or a sponge bath and the relief I felt thereafter was just amazing um, you can use any wipes pretty much when I go to the restroom even before being pregnant it's just a thing that we do in the house um, when you have a ball movement <laughs> you want to keep everything clean so I just use wipes to keep the area clean but these were really really helpful as well um, when I'm pumping because I am trying to keep up my supply I do pump and bring breast milk to the NICU I use these to wipe um, my breast area just to make sure I'm clean and um, you know they're very very handy so obviously I'm discussing these um, not in any order of importance but I just feel like what I'm talking about here will be uh, helpful anyway now pain management is going to be very very important post c-section you should manage your pain um, for me I can tell you when I was in a lot of pain like the day off the night off the day after and so um, my blood pressure was a little bit higher managed but higher and that is because I struggled with the pain so I was given a um a prescription some narcotics Amen. <laughs> and um, that was pretty much it. But stay on top of your pain management. It just makes you, it puts you in a better headspace and it just makes you a better person to be around because after surgery, you're going to need it. it I, I still hurt. Two weeks post postpartum. It's taking a lot for me to sit here, but I do need to get around and walk and move a little just to avoid things like blood clots and things like that. Now, on top of a prescription, you will be advised to continue taking your prenatal, so I continue taking those. Um, I'm also taking magnesium because that helps me to relax. Relax. I talk about magnesium a lot on this channel for the good things it has done for me with my struggles with anxiety. Um, CoQ10. I told the doctor I was using CoQ10. The doctor wants me to continue using CoQ10. It's an amazing supplement. Um, I'm also using beetroot extract just to get a little bit more potassium. I'm also making a lot of fresh green smoothies in the morning with a lot of spinach just to get more vegetables in. And I went back to using my fish oil. During pregnancy, I had to put this back on the shelf because, you know, with the mercury levels and things like that, the doctor wasn't really sure. But I'm back to using that um, because it's just going to help me with um, my nerves and nerve recovery and nerve health especially having that incision i'm gonna feel the after effects of that incision i'm already feeling the after effects like the tingling the weird sensations the burning things like that so i really feel like these supplements are going to help me and of course you know if you haven't following me for a while you know i'm going to eventually switch these around now because i was um diagnosed with um atypical preeclampsia is still very important for me to continue taking my blood pressure medications for some women that is a few weeks others that would be three months and others would be more than three months and there are other women who will be on these things for a lifetime I'm letting that go but I'm also working towards getting off 
prescriptions. Um, and it's going to be a process. But I did, um, I want to recommend that you invest in a proper blood pressure um, machine. I got this from my insurance company. They just kind of sent it to me. I know some people have issues with the cuff. I know some cuffs can be very inaccurate. Um, just find something that works for you. I'm not here to endorse any products, but the point I'm trying to make is that you want to make sure you're on top of your um, your, statis your statistics. Um, in my case, it would be my blood pressure. I, my doctor wants me to monitor that at least twice a day. I measure and I don't look at the numbers or anything like that. I am diligent with my prescription, my medications, and I'm hopeful that things are going okay. Of course, at my follow-up appointments, I'm going to learn whether or not I'm on the right dosage, okay? Um, also, uh, when you are in the hospital, they tend to give you these mesh underwear. So, not cute, but these have got to be the most comfortable things I've ever worn. <laughs> and um, as I said, when you're in that situation, it's not about being cute. I really like those. Um, in my labor and delivery bag, I actually had adult diapers. <laughs> I had panties, but I also had uh, adult diapers because you never know what you're going to need. And so this time around, I gave it a go. But these didn't work well for me immediately postpartum. Um, I found that the elastic at the front resting on my incision really was not the best feeling. I didn't like that at all. So I had to set those aside for a couple of days, but eventually these became very, very handy. You just use and dispose just like you would with a diaper, right? Um, the hospital likes to give you these huge pads. There's an adhesive. so. It was a little bit awkward trying to fit these on these mesh underwear. They literally would go up to your navel and up past your but the little split by your button all the way up on your spine because they're so long. They look like a mattress. That's the best thing I can think of. But these serve their purpose postpartum. Believe me, I, I took a couple when I came home and they serve their um their purpose. But, of course, by the third day, I just decided to go back to regular maxi pads. So, you just need to figure out what works best for you. Some people would say use the diapers. They swear by them. Other people would say use the ones the hospital gave um, at the time, you know, of being postpartum. And some people would say to just go with the maternity pads or the maxi pads. For me, it was just maxi pads, and I got these at Walmart. Um... For extra heavy bleeding and things like that so just find something that works for you with in my case I just had a sample of everything and eventually I figured it out so with that said on the subject of pads and padding um, I keep my um, how do you call it breast pads in a little bag these are the disposable ones I also have the reusable ones I like these a lot, um, but I also had a stash of these, so I'm also making sure I use them. And I just keep them handy just everywhere because I'm, I'm pumping around the clock. And so these are very, very handy for me. And just to have them in a little pouch, it's, it's cute. So just a couple of, couple of things. Um, I got this from... A company as I said I'm not going to endorse any product here but this came with my booster ball and eventually I was able to use this as a heating pad so I had my nurses um, heat this up for me and it comes with a little strap and whatever so you can just kind of get comfortable but having these on top of my belly helped with moving gas around um, having it at the, on my back where I got my spinal when I came home was a relief. Um, you can use these as a heat and cool pack. So I'm just recommending, you don't have to necessarily have, have this. You can have a hot and a cold, whatever your preference is, it's going to help you with your recovery because it helps you feel a little bit more comfortable. 
And then I think um, the last thing that I have to show you here, I purchased uh, these um, bras at on Amazon. So, you know, this one still has the tag. So they come in nude, uh, black and gray, the, the ones that I got. And so <clears throat> I'm just assuming that you are probably a mom who's going to try to pump. Um, for me, I my milk came in very, very early and it's a lot. So um, these are very, very handy. I'm wearing the black one right now, but it's very easy to unhook, hook up the machine and so, and you're hands free. So while I'm pumping, I'm able to read to Ebony. I'm able to um, catch up on the internet. I'm just able to do whatever I need to do instead of sitting there and just trying to um, pass the time because sometimes it takes a good half an hour as well. So again, I got these and Amazon, I can include the link at the bottom so you guys can see. So what I'm going to do now, oh, the last thing, um, I came home with this. The nurse told me to take the couple that I had in my room. And of course, this is just so convenient to track my fluid intake um, by my you know, like when I'm pumping, I can just drink a lot of water. I fill this up about three, four times a day just to keep well hydrated. And it's just really handy. And I think the magical thing about this is the straw. You know, when you have a container with a straw, you can just sip and sip and sip. And without even realizing it, you're getting your water, you know. So um, just have something where you can keep hydrated. Um, and that will just help you. Uh, feel better you feel like you're doing something good for yourself and it also helps with my milk supply so I'm gonna stop the video here and what I'm gonna do is move to the room where I sleep which is in Abney's room and that is for a reason and um, I'm gonna show you a couple of other things and then I'm gonna come back and end the video because I don't want to lift anything so it's easier for me to just move and show you what I need to show you okay guys so I um, really quick this is where I sleep so this is a recliner and um, this is one thing I would really really recommend if you're a c-section mom so this is my recliner and I'm in Abney's room because for the you know I really thought we were gonna be full term and then they're gonna share rooms and things like that even though I have extra rooms I didn't want to go ahead and set up anything new already have a changing table in here and all that so her room is big enough and has the space so I was just saying and thinking that it was just best to be in here anyway. Um, so I have a little uh, foot stand or whatever it is where I keep all my paperwork and so I can just sit here and work whenever. Um, and then I wanted to show you this little setup. I have a cart at the back and this cart has an extra uh, blood pressure machine so I can check my blood pressure at night because you know I get up at least once a night to pump use the restroom things like that I have um, snacks on here I have a pump machine the blue bags are actually um, bottles to store the milk but um, I don't want to open that because I try to keep everything clean as possible and so it is really nice the chair is not reclined right now but this is where I um, spend the night and it's just really easy to relax here and pump and snack and then the other little thing I want to show you is this cool little light so at night time when I'm sleeping I don't have to um, put on the the light in the room this is good enough I got this off Amazon and I can put the link as well but um, you can tap the intensity of the light changes and just really really handy um, so you know it's just something I would recommend as well to make life a little bit easier. Now, across the room, I have a walker. And people think walkers are for old people only. But this was really, really handy when I just came home. I really struggled. Um, I told you guys I had a blood transfusion and all that because my vitals were so low. And there were times just taking five, five steps made me feel very, very winded. So I would recommend a walker if you're struggling. Um, Ron got this and it really, really made a difference for me. And then the other little thing I want to show you is a um, shower stool. 
I, oh my gosh, I got this from Target and I cannot tell you how much for the Francis made. I wish I had this the first time around, but it's perfect for me. Uh, when you sit there, I don't feel like I'm struggling to take a decent shower. Or, you know, I'm not getting into the bathtub anytime soon, like obviously, but just having that support, I don't feel as winded. So I would really strongly recommend that you get that as well. Um, it didn't break the bank at all and you can find things online like these things you can find things online and sanitize and use and you know I'm just trying to show you the things that really helped me with this second c-section so I would recommend a shower stool not necessarily this one there are others with the back support and things like that I had this in the hospital I had a shower stool in the hospital and I knew off the bat I wanted one when I got home um, I hope you found this video very helpful. I know there are things that are obvious, but there are other things that people don't really think about, like maybe the shower stool and the cart with the food and the blood pressure machine. I really hope this video helped. Um, you know, my pregnancy ended so abruptly, so a lot of things I didn't get a chance to figure out, but after the baby, I figured things out really quickly because I had to think back to when I had Abney and you know i had to think about okay what what was it that i needed that really would have made a difference so i appreciate you looking um leave me a comment and i will catch you guys in the next one it, it felt really good to sit here and talk to you as a normal person even though i'm struggling terribly and not be in a hospital bed i figured three videos laying on a hospital bed was enough thank you guys and i'll see you in the next one